I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Keeping a saltwater tank is a very rewarding and enjoyable hobby. And I'd be lying to you if I told you that you're not going to have some bumps in the road with your tank. See, every tank has its ups and downs, especially for reef tanks. Now, when you do hit some downtime in your tank, there are specific steps to take to help you weather that storm. And I'm going to help you minimize that downtime. But before we get there, how do you even know if things are going bad in your tank? Note that at this point in the budget reef series, you'll have soft corals in your tank, so I'm concentrating on soft coral issues for this episode. When your soft corals aren't happy, you can tell because they die and disappear. They don't open up. For example, zoanthids. Unhappy zoanthids will stay closed and look like this. They shrink. This is more common with mushrooms. They'll still open up, but the coral gets smaller and smaller in size. When the soft corals in your reef tank don't look happy, don't simply throw in the towel. Look, ups and downs come with any hobby, and in the case of reef tanks, you're dealing with live organisms. One difference between good reef keepers and average reef keepers is how they weather the storm. See, an average reef keeper ignores her tank, or they toss in the towel when time gets tough. Good and great reef keepers work with the problem, attack it head on, and then restore their tanks to once again becoming thriving reef tanks. Once you've decided that you're not going to throw in the towel, which is a great decision by the way, here's what to do. First, look for pests. It's an easy check you can do from the outside of your tank. Just put your eyes on the tank and look for these common pests. For the soft coral reef tank, the pests I'm most concerned about are red planaria and zoanthidae denudibranchs. Red planaria won't destroy your coral, they will just ignore the coral such that the polyps don't come out. These guys are easily removed by dipping the coral in a coral dip. Zoanthid eating nudibranchs will eat your zoanthids and these guys are trouble. Remove the nudibranch as soon as you spot one. Then dip the rest of the coral if you can. Note that fish can be past the coral. Some fish are known to nip at or flat out eat coral. So if you see a fish eating the coral in your tank, you've got an answer to your coral problem. Sorry guys, I had to say it. I'm not saying it's you, but sometimes your buddies get in trouble. After a pest check, I always go to water chemistry first. Run your water tests and compare your results to these guideline values for the soft coral budget reef tank. Alkalinity between seven and 10 dKH. Nitrates between zero and 10 parts per million. Phosphates between zero and 0.1 parts per million. Remember that hitting these values exactly isn't the point. As long as you're close to the values, that's okay. You'll also want to compare your test results to your trends in your tank. Wait, what? Remember how I told you to write down your test results in the budget saltwater tank series? Run your test and here's the important step. Write the results down. This is one reason why. With a running log of test results, you can spot trends for water perimeters in your tank. Staying around the trend line is what you want. Hitting a specific number is less important. For example, in the budget soft coral tank, nitrates stay around five parts per million. If I run a nitrate test and the nitrates have risen to 15 parts per million, that's outside the normal range and that's a clue that something is happening in the tank. If I didn't have a list of test results, I wouldn't know that the test results that I just got were on a whack. Test and write down your test results. If you don't see any test results that are out of the ordinary, the next question to ask yourself is, what's changed in your tank? Have you added new gear? Remove existing gear. Change settings on existing gear? Added new fish or coral? Have you changed your routine with your tank? For example, you stopped doing water changes or you ran out of RODI water and had to use dechlorinated tap water. You're on the hunt for something different as that may have thrown things off in your tank. If your water test results aren't out of the ordinary and nothing's changed in terms of your tank routine, the next thing for you to do is to send off an ICP test. An ICP test uses lab-grade equipment and it can test for many more things than what you can test for with your own test kits. It can let you know if there are unwanted heavy metals in your tank's water, as well as high and low levels of other elements. All you need to do is grab yourself an ICP test, create an account on their website, send off your water sample, and then wait for the results. The ICP test also reports that the readings are above or below accepted values, so you can understand if there's a chemistry issue in your tank. Everything's still checking out? When everything is checking out on my tank and my corals are still having issues, I'll add a polyfilter to my system. Polyfilter absorbs contaminants and other toxic materials and a runny one can't hurt. It will even change colors and certain elements like copper are in your water. One of the most humbling and sometimes frustrating facts about reef tanks is while nothing appears to have changed on your tank, all of a sudden your tank starts not doing well. 
your water perimeters appear to be the same, your routines appear to be the same, yet the corals in your tank don't look good. And then you add on the fact that sometimes you don't find a single source for what caused the problems in your tank. It's likely not one thing that caused the issues, it's multiple things coming together. Now I tell you that in hopes that you don't hear that and then go, well then I shouldn't do anything with my tank. Get curious, follow the steps in these videos, and look for what's causing the problem in your tank. And if you can't find it, hold on, you're likely weathered the storm and come out fine on the other side. As my father always said, Skipper, hold your course. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.